Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, before we get started, I just want to point out that, um, you know, I know that you guys, you know, your favorite, um, you know, one of your favorite pastimes or, um, you know, commenting on my audio. I know, I'm sorry, I have not been able to figure that out. Um, you know, somebody wants to donate a really nice audio setup for me and send it on over, I would be happy to take it, you know, set me up with a nice studio, whatever. Um, but seriously, no, I, I really don't mind if you're saying that the video isn't great. Um, but I am working on it, so um, I'm not ignoring it. Um, as of now, all of my other input and output sources are off, other than the the video, I'm the audio I'm capturing from. I have checked that. Um, I am using a Yeti microphone, which uh, you know yeah, it's not in frame, but it's right in front of me. Um, so yeah, um, if you have different suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Um, and you know, sorry, I am working on it. Uh, I just haven't been able to have a solution. Um, so what I wanted to talk about today is I wanted to talk about um, my agenda. And I've talked a little bit about agendas before um, when I talked about capturing and when I've talked about uh, my day-to-day. -day. And I can just bring up my agenda really easily here, control C, A, C, uh, for my custom agenda view. And here it is. And um, one of the things that I don't like about org agenda, but it's not a big deal, is it defaults to giving you a two-week span starting from the beginning of the week we're at. So even though we are now in November 3rd, it starts me on the previous Monday. And so, um, you know, this G calendar event, um, I was visiting Stuyvesant to talk to um, the students there about my program. Then I had a, um, a workshop for my current students at Red Balloon Security. Um, then here I went to FDR High School. I've never been out there before. Um, really great people there. Uh, got to spend some time with the math chair, one of the computer science teachers, a whole bunch of students. They're all really cool people. Um, that was a lot of fun. Uh, went to see Maxim Vengarov, one of the greatest violinists of our day. Um, personally, my favorite. Uh, he gives a, he's an amazing live performer, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you'll notice that I have some of these from Google Calendar, some of them from another Google Calendar, and then there should be some, you know, well, actually none right now. Oh, no, here, the last school calendar. Uh, yeah, that was last night. Went to Nano Hackers. It's a middle school, high school uh, uh, coding program. That's also very cool. Um, you yeah, but these are just things that are in agenda. And um, this one is going a little bit forward. Actually, let me see this all. Let me view two weeks. weeks. And, and so, so we see here, here I have to do somebody's, somebody's recommendation uh, on Sunday, and it's just from my org, org mode stuff. stuff. Um, you know, here's, here's another one just from org mode. So basically, um, I've got these two calendar things going on, and I like Google Calendar the, just because I can access it easily from my phone. It integrates with that, and I'm not super fond of the org syncing tools that are out there right now. Um, and I, I sync from Google down to my org mode files, but I haven't, you know, I, I still have that problem when syncing the other way, I would get double entries, and it just wasn't worth it. So I'm still dealing with this double, some stuff on Google, some stuff on org mode, and it's working pretty well. But one of the things that I do to make it better and easier is I like getting an email every day with my agenda, so that way I have it in my email, so also on my phone I have all my org specific stuff. And, um, you know, at first I wasn't sure how to do this, but it turns out that org mode has a, um, has a way of um, doing things in bash mode. And if you just try to do things here, like org bash, you're not going to get anything. But if I go to help and I look at org bash, you'll see I have agenda, Store agenda views and an org batch agenda CSV. <coughs> and you'll see it's got these parameters. Yeah, there's stuff here for this. And I don't need this right now, but if we go and search the org manual, there's a whole bunch of things we can do. So, for example, here I can type in, and this first one won't work, batch and run. Let's avow the command org batch agenda. I'll use the command A for the agenda command if I'm here on Emacs. Uh, let's come back to this. If I see C A, um, I, now J for agenda for the week. I could have done list to do entry. Well, I'll do both of them actually. So let's do A, and then I'm going to give it org agenda span of 14 for giving me two weeks. And you'll see here. There's a lot of other commands you can do. This doesn't seem to work. 
And it doesn't seem to work because that's not my agenda file because this is just loading a vanilla Emacs. I've got to tell it that it should load my it should load my Emacs configuration file. So now if I do this, it brings up my actual agenda and I can now do stuff with this and I'll talk about this in a minute. So let's try another command. Let's just try um, my to do's. Let's not give it an argument. And those are my to do's. Um, you know, so that's kind of cool. And I can also um, org batch agenda CSV. And that gives it to me as a CSV file. So again, now I can use it as a CSV. And I can just redirect my standard error. That's what this two greater than is. And that's going to get rid of all the Emacsy, you know, messages as it's going. And I just get my org agenda here. So, uh, so this is a really cool tool. So if I can set up my machine to send emails, I can pull out my stuff from my org files, and then I can go to town with this. So the next thing that in my configuration, um, I use multiple machines. So I've got my desktop at work, my desktop at home, and my two laptops, work laptop, personal laptop. And um, I like having them all synced up. Um, and I also, you know, I, I could just use a Dropbox between them, um, but I also kind of like the idea of having, when I do this org agenda, I like having one machine that I know will always be on and on the internet, and I can't use my work machine for that because of the firewall and getting in and out of that, um, and my home machine is usually on but not always on. Um, so what I did is I set up a DigitalOcean box, a DigitalOcean droplet, and it's really easy to do. You just log in, you create a droplet, um, you follow the instructions, etc. And um, I already did this, but if you want me to do a walkthrough of creating a DigitalOcean droplet, just please let me know in the comments, and if enough of you want me to do that, um, I am more than happy to. Um, and I used to set this up with Dropbox, and Dropbox, if you search for Dropbox Headless, um, down here, you can install Headless on a remote server. You just can go to the DigitalOcean box and follow the instructions here. Um, and that'll let you set up Dropbox without the graphical interface really easily. Now, I'm moving away from Dropbox to something called SyncThing, um, which, you know, you can fork this on GitHub. It's open source. Uh, you can, um, I haven't played with this here. It says that SyncThing is also available on, on uh, you know, an Android, um, but haven't played with that yet. But essentially, it's letting me set up my own Dropboxy type things amongst all my machines. And I also like doing that over here on DigitalOcean. So I set up this box, SyncZamansky.net, um, which, um, which this way I have a central box that's always on. So I'm going to connect to that. Uh, and you'll see that I've got my org files here. It's all synced up. Everything is syncing. Um, and I've got basic Emacs on this. So I can actually run Emacs dash 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 L Emacs uh, dot D slash init.el and then eval or batch agenda a or agenda span 14. And uh, close my quotes. And I've got something here. Oh, I don't have my L file because if I um I haven't set this up, so let me set that up. So let me Emacs. And what I'm going to do is the only thing I really need here is I've got to say where my agenda files are. Uh, right. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to make that pretty now. Um, so bang, really quickly I get my agenda. And um, again, I can, yeah, no. Um, or, as I said, if I wanted to get this as a CSV, now it's a CSV and I could do all sorts of processing on it. So, again, all I need is where those agenda files are. 
This also makes it much faster because it's not loading all my interactive stuff. It's just loading my bare minimum for that. So now I want to be able to send mail. So I'm going to app get install postfix, which is the email program that I and uh, we'll do that. And you know you'll want to make sure that this is fully hardened and everything. Um, you know, look, you know, don't don't do this uh, blindly. Um, and I think I also need another package. Let me just do a test of an email. So this should just take another second. Uh, and so here, I, I'm doing this with my CSTI account because I know that there's nothing in it right now. I don't have to worry about showing emails. But now if I do a little test mail, so if I say mail zamansky at csti.org, uh, test, well, I didn't want to, you know, it's no CC, test, test mail, csti.org, let's come over here, just wait a minute, uh, this might go into spam, uh, so let's keep an eye on that. Yeah, so this went in from spam. Uh, let's. This is not spam. Does that move it over to the inbox yet? Oh yeah, there we go. So there's our test mail. Great. So you'll have to maybe deal with the spam stuff, and part of that is configuring your um, your mail device. And just so you know, um, where am I here? Um, this is configured. I can connect to sync thing sync.zemansky.net because I've set up domain services for zemansky.net. If you don't have your own domain, there's this, uh, there's this website, freedns.afraid.org, and you can create an account from this for free, and then you can um, register a subdomain, and I'm gonna log in here. I've already you know, created my account on this a while ago, um, and we're in subdomains. Uh, where's the free stuff? Um, yeah, I can just add a subdomain, and so let me make this bigger, you know. And so I could, I could um, grab my, um, you know, IP address here. here. You know, pull one of these. You know, I could make like a Zemansky sink at crabdance.com or at demoo.com or at strangle.net. And this would give you a domain name, so that way your machine has a resolvable name, and that will help with any spam problem, um, you know, if you don't register it. But anyway, so we're almost done with this. So what we can do now is we can run our command. So it's just going to be, but instead of, uh, we're going to pipe this through mail, and we're going to give it a subject of Mike's agenda. Or, and then I'm going to give it a date command, uh, and this should, I hope, work with the um, with the quoting. And I have this off screen that I'm copying. Well, I'll just I'm just going to copy this over. So basically, I'm doing that running Emacs, and I'm putting a user bin, I'll explain that in a minute, um, using that configuration file, um, and where are we with this? Okay. Um, and then we're going to do a val org batch agenda, and that's that command, redirect this output, you know, the, uh, the error stuff, the status stuff. Then I'm going to mail it all with the subject of Mike's agenda for this date. Um, to Zemansky at cstai.org, bang, let's come over to here, and here we got my agenda, and yeah, that's the entire two-week agenda, exactly what I was looking for, which is a really, really, really cool thing, and again, if I, if I want this as CSV, I could put this into a CSV file, uh, or I could do the CSV thing, and now I can 
I can write a little script to uh, to massage it or whatever. Now the last thing I want to show is um, I can put this into my cron tab and uh, cron it, it lets me schedule the job. So it's hour month rather, rather minutes and hours. So let's make it on the hour at 7 a.m. every day of every month, every day of the week, and let's run this command. Um, so it's going to run user bin emacs. It's 846, so let's make it, um, why don't we run it at 847, I don't know, well, 848. Um, Let's see if this works. Uh, I don't know what the timing on this is. So let me save this. Um, and so it's going to run all of this. This is why I specified user bin emacs. Cron tab again is under Unix. It lets you run things regularly. So I could put here, this should run at 848, which is just two minutes from now. So I'm just going to keep yammering. Um, and if I do, whoops. Uh, I have to put a new line into this. Cron tab dash L. Uh, sorry, uh, it's 8:47, so that's uh, 12:47 UTC. So this isn't going to work because the timing isn't right. Um, but okay, so I'm not worried about that for now. I'll just um, edit my cron tab. We're just going to make it five minutes um, after 7 a.m. I'm not going to worry about that for now. I'll fix the other thing. But now what will happen is every day, once I get the clock synced up, um, at 5 after 7, whoops, let me actually make that 5 minutes after, uh, let's make it 6.30. At 6.30 again, um, I'm going to get this email sent to me and actually, for the real one, I do want it to go to gmail.com, which I have here, not um, you know, not my CSTAT account. So anyway, that's setting up um, using an email, you know, using a org batch to, to get out your agenda and send it via email. It's very, very cool. Um, if you want me to go over the digital ocean or the sync thing stuff, I'm happy to do that. Um, and I'm just going to check the date stuff on this. Um, uh, now so you guys don't have to watch me while I fiddle that so I hope that you enjoy this all right so that's it